Hello, I'm Darren McGee, and the topic for today's video comes from many different questions I've had about hoovering. Now, hoovering is a form of manipulation that would typically occur whenever a narcissistic person loses or fears they're going to lose their supply of attention, validation, or control. They fear their target will get away from them, abandon them. It's often aimed at keeping or reeling someone back into the cycle of abuse, common in narcissistic relationships. It involves coercing some kind of engagement, whether positive or negative. So in this video, I'm going to outline some of the common motivations and reasons behind the hoovering. I'm also going to outline some of the different kinds of hoovering and the common tactics they use. So if you like this video, if you find it interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. So just to remind you, narcissism is often characterized by an inflated sense of self. There's a huge sense of entitlement a constant need for validation and attention. There's being highly disagreeable and being highly resistant or highly sensitive to criticism. There is also a lack of empathy for others and these characteristics would be long-term, persistent, pervasive, not just once in a while. So some of the common motivations behind the hoovering include, first of all, their ego has been hurt. Narcissists have a very fragile sense of self, a very fragile ego. They need others to constantly validate them and pay attention to them. And they aren't so good on their own. They have no one to listen to them, no one to pay attention to them. They struggle to be alone with their own thoughts. So they might want someone back just for the narcissistic supply. And remember the sense of entitlement and the lack of empathy for others. They believe they're entitled to the validation, they're entitled to the attention, the company, the control, whatever it is. But they either don't understand or really don't care why someone has left them, why that person would be better off without them. But even if they are getting a narcissistic supply from someone else, perhaps a new partner, a narcissist can find it difficult to let go of the attention. Their ego will never be satisfied. Another reason for the hoovering is their pride. Another common characteristic of narcissism is an inflated sense of superiority. They might not want to be seen as the person who was dumped, so they might want someone back just so that they can dump them. Now this might sound a bit petty, but with narcissism we often see emotional immaturity. Or they could try to hoover someone back into their life so that they could punish them for abandoning them in the first place. To a narcissist this would be like evening the score. Someone has hurt them, so they have to hurt them back, but they have to establish some kind of contact first. And here we see the vindictive side of narcissism. There is also a need for dominance. For instance, if someone has decided to go no contact with them, they might believe they have to prove to themselves and their target, I can make you talk to me, even though you think you won't. And here we see the need to regain some kind of control. Narcissists tend to struggle if they don't feel as if they're in control. They struggle with other people's boundaries, their autonomy, particularly those they consider inferior to them, which is pretty much everyone to be fair. But they especially struggle when they lose control over those they have spent a long time grinding down. If they get that person back, they have control over them again and the cycle of abuse starts all over again. So there are some of the common reasons. Now let's look at some of the common tactics they use to hoover someone back. And the first would be promises that things will get better. They have just had a hard time at work lately or they have had to work through their issues that other people have caused. There can be promises to change, but they're not necessarily clear about what changes they're prepared to make. They could be pleading, you know, would you be prepared to give it another go? However, if you were to ask them if I stay, what would be different? Or if I would come back, what would be different? They might struggle to answer. Narcissists tend to lack emotional depth as well as empathy. If you ever really see themselves as ever, ever having done anything wrong, and even if they do, generally doesn't last long. Their defense mechanisms kick in and they find a way to absolve themselves of any wrongdoing and dump it onto others. The fault always lies outside of them which means so does the solution. It's other people who have to change. Another form of hoovering is when they become very generous. They suddenly become very attentive again, making sure you're okay, you have what you need, performing acts of kindness. There could be gifts or the promises of gifts. They were gonna book a luxury holiday for the two of you. They were gonna help you out with your debt, buy you a new car. Now, depending on the person, whereabouts they are on that narcissistic spectrum, 
It could be said they're trying to undo the hurt they've caused with their generosity the only way they know how. Or they might hope that you'll be so pleased you'll forget about the bad behaviour. Because narcissists tend to be quite materialistic, they like to have and be surrounded by nice expensive things. They tend to think others are like that as well, which is, I think is why they often think people envy them, or at least should envy them. So maybe they think the gifts would appeal to their targets as they would to them. But really, it's just bribery. And again, due to a lack of insight, they might have difficulty understanding why their gifts are refused or returned. Next, they can become very romantic. They can pull out old pictures of the two of you together, talk about how young, how happy you both look together, remember the good times. It's a form of love bombing. It's when they put someone back onto the pedestal that they kicked out from under them. You're the most amazing, special, precious, wonderful thing they've ever met. And they have no idea what they're supposed to have done to hurt you because you're so amazing to them. They become very interested and enthusiastic about the things that you're interested in. If something is important to you, it's important to them. They idealise someone the same way they did when they first met. They might pull out a gift that you once bought them. It means so much to them. It reminds them of your love for them. Or you might just get a text or an email out of the blue. They were just walking through a beautiful autumn landscape and were thinking about you. After all, this always was your favourite time of the year. They can become quite nostalgic, quite sentimental, and they wonder where it all went wrong. Anything at all in the hope that you will respond to them. But on that note, another form of hoovering would be what's known as the accidental text or the accidental phone call. They were reaching out to someone else, they don't know how they made that error, but hey, since you've answered. If they are using text or email to try to hoover someone back, it wouldn't be uncommon for the messages to swing between romanticising, pleading, guilt tripping, to vilifying or even threatening. For instance, they might just say how much they're missing you, but they don't get the response they expected, so they go on the attack. They might come back later on apologising but trying to guilt trip you, again they don't get the answer they wanted or the answer they expected, they go on the attack again. I think what we see here is often a sense of desperation as they try anything to get any kind of response, but also emotional dysregulation if they don't get a response or the response they were hoping for. If their own schemes don't work, they get very angry. Hoovering can also involve guilt tripping. How could you leave them after all they've done for you? They may exaggerate injuries, illnesses, issues. How could someone leave them to struggle alone? They exaggerate a sense of helplessness to exploit their target's compassion and their empathy. Again, a common thing to look out for is how they can talk a lot about how hurt they are, but they have little to no concept of why others are hurt. It's all about them. There could be threats to harm themselves or indeed harm others to try to trigger fear. If it was a long-term relationship or indeed a family of origin, remember they have had plenty of time to learn what buttons to push to evoke responses like fear, guilt and shame. And next would be when the hoovering is done by proxy. Now this can involve stalking, spying, triangulation or mobbing. And this is when they recruit their supporters, their enablers, sometimes referred to as flying monkeys. And these agents carry out the work for them. They might plead with you to go back or to at least take a phone call. They might pass on information on the narcissist's behalf or try to gather information on the narcissist's behalf. Sometimes it's even to carry out the abuse on the narcissist's behalf. Because even if there is no contact between the narcissist and their victim, they still love the thought of their victim having to think about them, whether they want to or not. They still love the idea of having some kind of influence over their lives. And lastly, they can be antagonistic. There can be threats. They can say things to start an argument. Remember, narcissists can be very disagreeable as well as vindictive, and many thrive off drama, chaos, and the misery of others. If they can't have your love and your admiration, they will settle for draining your emotional and your mental energy. They might demand information, demand you explain yourself, even if you have already repeatedly. They will gaslight, bully and intimidate. They could brag about how much better off they are, 
how much better off they are than you are. They may brag about how much their new partner is far superior to you. Again, sometimes I don't know if this is denial or delusion, but sometimes they will behave as if you should be regretting having left them. But one way or another, narcissists do not like having or losing control over others. So bad attention is better than none at all. So to conclude, regardless of how or why they try to hoover someone back, some of those tactics can be quite methodical, well thought out and planned. Other times they're haphazard and they're childlike. They will do or say whatever is in their head at that moment. Anything at all that they think might get them some kind of contact, some kind of response. And as open as a narcissist could be about the fact that they're hurting, Due to a lack of emotional insight, emotional intelligence, they can find it difficult to articulate what that pain is, what it actually means. They can have little to no concept of how or why their victims feel the way they do, why they left in the first place, why there is a need for no contact. They also have a long memory. They can hold on to a narcissistic wound pretty much for the rest of their days, ruminating over what they're going to do and say if they ever get the chance. Sometimes trying to think of ways in order to either try to win someone back or how to hurt them. Sometimes both. And those hoovering tactics, by the way, they don't have to happen immediately. Sometimes weeks, months, even years could pass before one day maybe you get a text or an email just out of the blue. They're wondering how you are. And if you respond, the cycle starts all over again. So that's a brief outline of hoovering, the reasons, the motivations behind it. And some of the common tactics involved now as always if there's anything i've missed anything you would like to add please use the comment box below there are some interesting conversations start around these videos but if you find this video interesting if you find it helpful please consider subscribing to my channel and until next time thanks for watching